Hey guys, so I wanted to throw a quick video together showing how we can use um, X particles actually with Corona right now. It's not currently supported officially, um, but I found a pretty sweet little um, workaround here for getting it to work. Um, super basic, uh, but it does work and it's rendering really fast and I thought I'd show you guys how we can set that up real quick. So I basically have a couple lights set up, a ground plane that's negative 400 in the space here and a camera underexposed a little bit. And yeah, so let's go ahead and bring in an X particles emitter and we can see that here. And I'm gonna set this guy to um, be a circle and then let's go ring only um, and this way just is emitting particles from the outside ring. Um, and then let's go ahead and bring in a modifier motion and some quick standard turbulence. Nothing too special, but um, this will kind of get us going. So as of, you know, right now, if you hit render with Corona, you know, we're not gonna see anything um, with these particles. And unfortunately, there's not a tag yet that we can apply to this to get some render time geometry. Uh, but what we can do is actually use the um, XP generator object and we can create our own particle here. So we're just gonna bring in a sphere and let's set this to hexahedron and I'm gonna lower the segments to six. So we have a really low poly um, sphere here. And I'm gonna put the radius to like one centimeter nice and small. So I'm going to drop this into my generator and um, we need to link up the emitter but I'm not going to do that quite yet because there's a few particles in the scene there. So you know I got 700 particles here and if I drag this emitter into here um, and restart um, you can see so now it's generating a unique sphere primitive for every particle and it's super slow you can see my frames per second so, um, already down to seven frames a second. Obviously we can't work like that, um, but if I do render here uh, in the Corona interactive renderer, you can see that we are in fact um, getting that geometry because it's here in our viewport as well. Um, but what we can do is with the XP generator, we can switch the clone type to render instances. And for the draw mode, we can just switch this to geometry on render only. Um, so let me just start this back up and let's let it shoot out quite a few particles this time. You know, I don't know, 5,400. And then I'm going to save a couple times and let's see what we get here. So just like that, you can see we're getting an instant um, render with Corona. And this is awesome because as far as I can tell, this is rendering just as quick as, you know, any other um, engine in terms of, you know, the geometry being rendered at render time because effectively that's what this is doing here. Um, the only downside is it, it is a little bit slower if this is enabled. So if I uncheck this guy, you'll, you'll see that we get even better performance in the viewport. Um, so let me throw in a few more frames. Let's um, emit quite a few more particles. Uh, let's see here. Let's go like 3,000. And so here we're shooting out a lot more particles. And, you know, that's almost 20,000. And this is great. So, but if I enable the generator, it is going to slow down. See how many frames per second drop here. Um, but that's no big deal because we can work, you know, like this just as if you know, we're working with any other engine. Um, and if I go ahead and check this on when I'm doing my uh, look development, you know, it's going to render pretty much instantaneously. Um, you know, and I can still orbit around. It's just when we're, um, you know, doing our playback and when we're simulating and all that good stuff. Uh, but let me crank up my light brightness. And actually, I'm going to select both these lights in make them invisible directly and maybe I'll scale this guy back and let's really crank up the brightness on this guy. Um, so that's looking pretty cool. But yeah guys, so 
you know, X particles with Corona Renderer. And what's really great is not only can we, you know, get this working this way, but if I create a new Corona material, and for fun, I'm gonna throw in a reflection, and into the fuse channel, I'm gonna load in the um, X particles, sorry if this is getting cut off here, the sample shader. And with this guy, um, I can actually uh, bring in some color based on speed, age, um, radius. So if I do age, and then um, let's just go down here and grab ourselves a silly preset here uh, for the gradient. Let's do this interesting uh, pastel thing here. And if I go ahead and throw this onto my generator object, now remember I unchecked it. So if I re-enable it here and fire up the interactive renderer, uh, you should see that um, the material is working. We just need to go in here actually and change the max distance um, up. So let's set it to like 200, see what we get here. Hey guys, so <laughs> I realized uh, the, the thing is here, we, we need to actually put our emitter uh, in this slot here. So my bad uh, for missing that, but um, it does work, uh, and if I um, enable my XP generator again after I've, you know, simulated my particles here, and we fire up the interactive renderer, you can see here uh, that that is working. So this is great because um, being able to control the color uh, via age, speed, all that good stuff is awesome. Um, and it works, you know, with the interactive renderer pretty well. If I go here and uh, load in a different uh, gradient, you'll see this update here, and um, that's all working well right inside of uh, Corona. Um, and I and I think the reason this works is, you know, partly because Corona is really deep integration into Cinema 4D, um, and so a lot of this stuff is actually um, working when it's technically not officially supported. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, if I go to the emission tab here and do like some speed variation, and in fact, let's just crank up the speed to like 300, the variation to 300, and I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck this. That's the only gotcha is you kind of have to toggle this guy on and off. Um, not that big a deal though for, for something that's not officially supported yet. Um, but if I enable this again, fire up the interactive renderer, um, we can see kind of what we're getting with the color there. And it's really fast, guys. Like, I mean, you know, just Corona is just crazy fast in general. But, you know, I'm able to, you know, get all these particles rendering near instantaneously. And that's pretty much, uh, yeah, what we're looking for when we're, when we're working with X particles. So let's see what happens if I let a ton of particles go here. Uh, we'll see how high we get. Um, now this is nothing too crazy. Obviously, you know, people simulate millions and millions of particles, uh, but this will just be a good quick test for something that, uh, you know, is not technically supported yet. Um, so live particles, we got um, almost 50,000. And let me turn on the generator. And you can see that I can still move the camera around nice and, and get around my viewport. It's just the actual playback uh, during, um, you know, the simulation of X particles when this generator is enabled, it does, uh, you know, impact the playback speed quite a bit. But no big deal. So I'm going to fire up the IPR here, or IR. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty dang instantaneous, guys. So that's, um, you know, 50,000 X particles um, rendering in Corona right now, even though it's not technically supported yet. And, uh, yeah, guys, I'm just super excited about this because I, I need to use X particles on a couple upcoming Corona jobs. And, uh, I think this is going to work out quite well. Um, another quick thing that, that does work as well is uh, motion blur. So if I go in here and let's see here, just enable objects for the motion blur. Let's fire this up again, and um, let's see what we get here. Might have to zoom in here. 
and it might be something that we have to cache, um, but it was working quite well. It would probably help if I actually checked it. <laughs> um, okay, let's just scoot back here a little. And I'll just, for the sake of keeping this video nice and short, I'm gonna just let a few shoot out here and we'll fire this up. And let's see here, let me just double check. I might actually have it unchecked. Yeah, it'd probably help too if it was enabled um, for the interactive renderer. Let's restart this once more. And voila, there we go. So motion blur works, which is great because um, yeah, particles look a lot better when you have motion blur enabled. Um, so yeah, guys, uh, hopefully this excites some of you out there and um, you can dive in uh, and try this technique with X particles and Corona right now. Thanks again for checking this out.